Hi everyone, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. I've been traveling down memory lane a lot lately, and one of the places I've been visiting the most in my mind is my great-grandmother's house. It occurred to me not so long ago that she had crochet everywhere, and I don't just mean the quintessential throw over the couch, or maybe the doily under the lamp, or the basket of slippers by the door, but every little nook and cranny in her home had some kind of crafty little touch to it. In particular, all of her facial tissue boxes had a cover on them. So, with a little inspiration from my great-grandmother, we've designed a very simple coverlet for your Kleenex box. You can make it short to fit a small one, or a little longer to fit a big one. But best of all, we are going to make it using 24-7 cotton by Lion Brand. And we'd like to thank Lion Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video. 24-7 cotton is a size 4 medium weight yarn. It's 100% mercerized, which means it's strong and durable, it's got a lovely sheen to it, and it's not going to pill. Plus it's machine washable and dryable. It makes a great choice for projects around the house, especially in busy areas like the tissue box. We're going to link to lionbrand.com in the description box down below so you can pop over and check out all of the pretty colors that it comes in, and it comes in a lot. You'll definitely be able to find one to match your decor. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a tissue box cover together. In order to make our tissue box cover, we're using Lion Brand 24-7 cotton. One little ball of this will do ya. There is uh, three and a half ounces or 100 grams in each skein or 186 yards, 170 meters. You won't need the entire ball, but you're gonna need much of it. And if you've got somewhat loose tension, you might use a little bit more than me. This is a size for medium weight cotton. It's 100% mercerized, so it's got just that perfect, nice, sturdy little spin to it. It's the perfect yarn for this kind of a project. I'm using lemon, which I absolutely love. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, you'll probably find a measuring tape will be handy for this project. I'm using a five millimeter hook. This is also known as an H or an eight. And you're gonna want a tissue box. I've got a regular sized tissue box here. This measures out to be 22 centimeters uh, wide by 10 and a half centimeters deep and seven centimeters tall. So 22, seven, 10 and a half, that's the centimeters. If you're look, looking at the inches, it's 8.75 or eight and three quarters. It is 4.25 or eight and, or four and a quarter and 2.75 or two and three quarter inches. So 8.75, 2.75, 4.25. So that's the measurements of the box I'm using. I'd say this is probably a pretty standard sized tissue box. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. The gauge for this project is using the Lion Brand 24-7 cotton and the 5 millimeter hook, or an H, is 10 stitches by 5 rows gives you 7.5 centimeters wide, 3.5 centimeters tall, or in Imperial, it is 3 inches wide, 1.5 inches tall. Again, that's 10 stitches by 5 rows. We're going to take our yarn, start with a slip knot on our hook, and we're going to chain 31, that's 3 1 to begin. This entire project is worked using the single crochet stitch, so nice and easy. You want 31 chains to begin. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook and single crochet into the next chain, and single crochet into each chain all the way back. You'll have 30 stitches at the end of row one. You will have 30 stitches at the end of every row in this first piece of our tissue box cover. At the end of row one, you'll have 30 stitches. We are still using the single crochet stitch, so that means at the end of every row, we chain one and we turn. The chain one turn is just for turning. It is not considered a stitch. You do not work into it. You just skip it. You work your first stitch 
into that first stitch of the row. So skip your turning chain, look for the first stitch, you're single crocheting into every single stitch all the way across. Chain one turn when you get to the end of the row, you'll have 30 stitches in every row. You're going to repeat this single crochet in each stitch all the way across, chain one turn until you get to row 18. So full 18 rows of single crochet back and forth. I'll see you at the end of row 18. At the end of row 18, you should still have 30 stitches all the way across. Make sure you do have 30 stitches because that will A, keep you on track for the rest of this pattern, B, keep your edges nice and straight, and C, will allow for the counts of the following row. So for row 19, we are going to separate some of our stitches to create an opening for our tissue. So chain one, turn at the end of row 18, and we're going to single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So the first seven stitches of the row, get a single crochet, so that's seven, we're going to chain 16 now, so one six, chain 16, Careful not to let your work twist on you. And now you're going to skip the next 16 stitches all the way across. Into the 17th stitch, you're going to single crochet. So skip 16 and into the next stitch, single crochet. So you have the same number of chains as you have skipped stitches below. 16 chains, 16 skipped single crochet. You'll have six stitches left after that single crochet you made to anchor your chained length. And that is row 19. So single crochet in the first seven stitches of the row, chain 16, skip 16 stitches, single crochet in the last seven stitches of the row, and this creates the opening for our tissue. Chain one, turn, and now you're going to single crochet in each stitch and chain all the way back to the beginning of the row or the other side of the fabric. You'll still have 30 stitches. So when you get to that last stitch there of actual single crochet and you start in on the chains, you're going to treat that chain length just like you would a regular foundation chain. So single crochet in each one of those chains all the way across. You'll have 16 of them, and then you're going to single crochet in each of the remaining stitches, which will be seven, to finish the row. So you should still have 30 stitches at the end of row 20, and then chain one, turn, and continue to single crochet in every single stitch all the way across until you get to row 37. I'm going to let you finish this row. I'll pop back in in a minute and then we'll finish off this chunk of the pattern together. At the end of row 20, you should still have 30 stitches and that's what your opening will look like. That's going to sit on the very middle top of your box when you've got the cover down. And now it's just more of the same. Chain one, turn your work, skip your turning chain, single crochet in every single stitch all the way across. You'll still have 30 stitches per row and I'll see you at the end of row 37. At the end of row 37, you should still have 30 stitches. You can snip your yarn, if you haven't already, and fasten off. And this is what you should have, a piece of fabric that's roughly a square, maybe a little rectangular, with a opening in the middle. So this is the middle top of your tissue box, and this is going to go across the top and down the sides. Now we are going to be adding some finishing rows all the way around the bottom of this thing once our sides are on and we're all stitched up, which is going to allow you to make it a little longer if you need it to be, uh, either because you're just a little short or if you've got like a double 
uh, tall box of tissues. So that's why this is sort of a flexible pattern. Now, you're going to want some stitch markers or safety pins, just something to mark the ends of your rows. We are looking to mark the end of the 12th row in from the top and the bottom. And the way you do that is to just pick up your fabric. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's row 12. So at the end of row 12, I'm going to put a little stitch marker and I'm going to zip across, count up the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing coming in from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to count that, mark that twelfth row edge, and then do the exact same thing on the other side. Once you've marked either end of the twelfth row in from the bottom and the twelfth row in from the top, you are going to join your yarn with a single crochet in the edge of that first row where your first stitch marker is. So it doesn't matter what side you start on, I'm starting on the right side, but just to double check I'm going to count in my rows to make sure that I've got the twelfth row. So the twelfth row edge is where I had my stitch marker, this is where I'm joining my yarn with a single crochet. So slip knot on hook, insert hook around the edge of the row, pull up a loop, and single crochet. You're going to single crochet in the edge of each of those rows right up until and including the row edge of this one over here marked by your other stitch marker. So in total you will single crochet across the edge of 15 rows. So you will have 15 stitches along this first little side piece foundation row. As you get across to the 15th row edge, which we right where your stitch marker is, count them up, you should have 15 there. Chain one, turn, and that's the hard part over with. Now you're just going to single crochet in each of those 15 stitches all the way back. Chain one turn, single crochet in each stitch, and you're going to single crochet back and forth, chaining one at the end of every row and turning for 10 rows total. I'll see you at the end of row 10 and we'll catch up on our work thus far. That should be the end of 11, not end of row 10. You've done your foundation row of single crochet, 10 more rows on top of that, so your last row is row 11. You should have 11 rows in total, including that foundation row of single crochet, in which we joined and worked across the edge of our existing piece. So 11 rows total. At the end of row 11, you should still have 15 stitches all the way across. You're going to cut yourself a nice long tail, maybe oh, I don't know, 12, 14 inches, 30, 35 centimeters, somewhere in there. Fasten off, and you're going to use that tail to sew your edges together. So we're not going to do this yet. We're going to do, do the other side of our, uh, our little tissue box cover first. But what you're going to do eventually is sew up here, pull your yarn gently across that second row of stitches, and then you're going to let's get this over here. Pull it across the second row of stitches and then stitch up the other side because you're creating a little box cover. But we'll get to that. First of all, what you want to do is flip your work over. You're going to join your yarn with a single crochet and repeat exactly what we did on the other side. So you start in that 12th row edge, the marked stitch where your single, your stitch marker is. Count in again just to be sure. Single crochet all the way across into the last row marked by your stitch marker. That'll be 15 stitches in total because you're covering 15 rows. Chain one turn, single crochet in every stitch across for 11 rows total. That's 10 rows on top of your foundation single crochet row and it'll look exactly like this one over here. Once 
once you've finished 11 rows in total, so your foundation row single crochet plus 10 more rows, fasten off. Again, leave a nice long tail for sewing. We're going to seam up our little edges now to turn this into a box of sorts. You want to keep your stitch markers. You don't have to, but I just find that this is kind of helpful. Um, there is no right or wrong side to this, so we're just going to lay it flat and bend in our little edges. Pair up the seams. I'm just going to sort of pinch mine together. Do the same thing over here. And on the other side. So you have a little something that looks like this. Now we're going to take our yarn that is left on either end. So we're going to have one long tail on this side and one long tail on this side. And what we're going to do is carefully sew through each matched row. So you've got 11 rows running up here. Don't sew too tight. Just try to whip stitch. So this is an overlocking stitch. Whip stitching means you're always going in the same direction and you're always going around the edge. So your yarn, say in this case I'm going from the bottom to the top. I'm always going from the bottom to the top and my yarn comes around the open edge from the bottom to the top, around the open edge to the bottom or from the bottom to the top and so on. I'm just grabbing the edge of those stitches and I'll be turning this right side out so my seams will be on the inside all the way up to the top. There we go. And just give it a quick look to make sure you haven't missed anything. See? Nice and neat and tidy seam. Then I want to take my yarn and just gently go through maybe every other loop of every other stitch. doesn't have to be every single one. All you're doing is just pulling your yarn across to get it over here so that you can stitch up this side. So maybe pull back on it just to make sure that you haven't pinched the top. And you see I've just run it across the inside. It's not going to show on the outside at all. So it's just across the top. Don't pull it too tightly. And then you had, should have just enough left to stitch up this side over here. And when you get to the bottom, we're going to knot it and weave in anything that's left. Once you get down to the bottom, you're going to make yourself a, just a simple little knot. I like to just create another loop right at the bottom and then bring my yarn back through that loop. So I've got very little yarn left here. There we go. Just make a little knot. If you've got slipper yarn or you have very little left or you're just worried about it unraveling, you can make a second knot. But what I'm going to do is just take what's left and weave it back and forth through a couple stitches. And that should stop it from wanting to unravel. And once you're done, you can flip your box over to this side, thread up the long tail left over here, and do exactly the same thing. Stitch up one side, bring it carefully across by sort of coming underneath every other stitch, and then sew, sew up that seam, knot it, weave in your tail, and we'll have a little open box. Once you've finished sewing up both edges, you should have something that looks like this. You can go ahead and weave in any of your short tails or leave them out and uh, single crochet over them because we're about to do a little bit of a finishing edge. So you can flip it now right side out so your sewing seams will be tucked to the inside. You'll have this lovely little loose cover. 
Let's try it on, see how we're doing so far. So you should have a little cover that fits nice and neatly over top of your box and it'll be a little bit high at the edges and that's intentional. This way we can finish off with a few rows of single crochet across the bottom because we have the, the foundation chains here and we have single crochet here and some sort of finishing edges that might be a little uneven just because of the sewing. So we want to work a row or two or three or four or ten, depending on how deep your box is, of single crochet all the way around. So here we go. We're going to grab our hooks, we're going to grab our yarn, start with a slip knot on our hook. You can join your yarn with a single crochet anywhere you want. I'm going to start over here in my first foundation chain right at the corner so that I can work over top of both of these little short tails. So you can join anywhere you want. I like to join near a corner but I'm going to use that foundation chain just as my starting point. Joining with a single crochet and now I'm going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way across the bottom of the foundation chains. Then I'm going to skip over top of the seam. So I'm going to work my last single crochet into the last foundation chain. Then I'm going to hop over and start single crocheting in each of those stitches. Your stitches are easy to see. Finish there, hop over, continue single crocheting. The other thing you can do is count. So you should have um, 11, no 15 and 15 is 30 plus 30 and 30. So 90 stitches all the way around. You don't want to work into your seams or corners. You just want to single crochet in every single foundation chain and stitch all the way around the bottom edge. So 90 to be exact. Once you've worked your last stitch, you can join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet that you joined the row with and Try it on. If it needs another row, you can go ahead and add another row. If it needs a couple more rows, you can go ahead and add a couple more rows. Keep in mind that this is going to stretch with use, um, and you may or may not want it to go all the way down to the, um, to the surface that your box sits on. I'm going to add a row or two more to the edge of my cover, and then that'll be that. So how do you continue that pattern? Great question. <laughs> Once you join with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the same stitch that you joined in, and single crochet in every single stitch around. It should still be 90 stitches. So you want 90 stitches in every row. When you get it back, back around, your last stitch will be here. You're going to skip over top of that join and the chain one that you used to start the row. So if you have to, you can mark that first stitch with a stitch marker. Count as you go. You should have 90 stitches in the row. When you get back to the beginning, you're joining with a slip stitch to the top of that first stitch. You can chain one, single crochet in the same place and keep going if you want, or if it's long enough, fasten off and weave in ends. I've done two complete finishing rows. so. Row one, row two, I've joined my last row with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet, and I am done. That fits neatly. I know that it's going to stretch out a little tiny bit. With use, It will uh, the weight of the stitches will pull it down a little bit, or I can block it into place, and I know that fits my Kleenex box or my tissue box perfectly. So I'm going to fasten off, get that knot nice and tight, and then I'm going to weave it in across the inside edge, maybe a, a row or two up from the bottom. Now like I said, you can work as many of those single crochet rows around the bottom as you want. Every row should have 90 stitches in it. Uh, you don't want to lose stitches because that will start to make it tight and you don't want to gain stitches because that will make it loose. So keep that 90 stitch count all the way around and then you can just continue to add rows as necessary. So if you have a deeper tissue box, some of these tissue boxes have like double the number of tissues in them, it might be a little bit deeper. Typically they are though the same sort of width and depth dimensions, it's just the height of the box that might change. So this pattern that we've created will let you 
decorate or cover up those taller or shorter boxes. And uh, once you're done, you can trim any excess. Let's put this on. And of course, there's the tissue. There, fits like a glove, exactly the way it's supposed to. Comes right down to the bottom edge, and that covers up a cardboard tissue box very nicely. And of course, you can make it to fit your bathroom. Besides making these to match your decor, you can also make them to match the upcoming holidays or even the seasonal change too. In fact, you could even add some little appliques along the edge to further personalize this project. We've got an entire playlist of applique tutorials and we'll link it down below. So if you're looking for a little added inspiration, you can check those out too. If you're going to do any embroidery or applique adding to your tissue box cover, I recommend you use the same fiber. In fact, if you can use the same yarn, that would be even better. That's just so when you pop it in the washing machine, everything will play nice together and it won't stretch it out of shape. We hope you enjoyed making this little tissue box cover along with us. And thank you again to Lime Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video. We will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, Try not to catch a cold, <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.